all right so welcome welcome everybody we are coming to this video of um, doing the k omega ssd model now before i start uh, i just want to give a shout out to um, dr aiden of fluid mechanics 101 so i learned a lot from his videos and uh, he's one of the one of the best uh, fluid mechanics guys uh, i've seen so uh, he does present a very good uh, summary of uh, the K-Omega SSD model in 20 minutes. The link I'll put in the description. So this is his link. So big shout out to you. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'm also here to present on K-Omega SSD, but I won't be presenting as succinctly as he does. Uh, I'll go really, really slow uh, based on what I have done in the last few videos. So yeah, just uh, giving credit where credit's due. So yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, this is his channel. Uh, this is the video. Uh, I'm going to close this first. This is my channel. Um, so, where we left off. Yeah, so where we left off is we were comparing the K Epsilon model to the K Omega model. And we found out that the key difference, well, I mean, of course, you can adjust the constants as you want. But as long as the constants are more or less the same, um, the key difference is this special little term here in the omega equation that contributes to the destruction of epsilon. That means to say um, in the k-epsilon model, um, the rate of drainage or the rate of, um, you know, let's say you have this uh, uh, kinetic energy here. Yeah. The main difference is this. You, you have this uh, kinetic energy, the turbulent Ke here. And this is sitting in this little tank, all right? So let's say you have a siphoning pipe, and this is what epsilon, um, no, eps, yeah, epsilon is about, right? Or equivalently, you can just name this omega, right? Because omega equals to epsilon over k. Uh, it's some normalized, uh, normalized um, uh, drainage is, is telling you how fast uh, kinetic energy is being converted into heat. All right, so it's being converted into heat. So if this is bigger, if this is bigger, then it's faster for all the kinetic energy to be converted to heat. But in the K uh, epsilon model, you have this extra term that makes omega smaller. So in the K epsilon model, the pipe, the so-called pipe that converts this thing to heat is smaller than in the K omega model. Okay, so in the K omega model here, and then the K epsilon model is here. So, um, in fact, so the K epsilon model will tend to have a higher turbulent kinetic energy, and this is good for the bulk fluid where it's turbulent, and this, this is good for uh, the boundary layer okay the boundary layer so they want to have a best of both worlds and this is the inspiration for the k omega sst model yeah, so this is the inspiration for the k omega sst model and then um, well uh, you will have a, a kinematic uh, eddy viscosity here which is the turbulent viscosity now you, you'll see all these max functions here, all that. Uh, don't worry, we'll get to that shortly. Uh, there, there's a reason why it's uh, structured as such. But just ignore this for the time being and assume it's, you know, the turbulent viscosity, it's more or less the same. Okay, because this, this, uh, this function, uh, it does toggle between two kinds of turbulent viscosity, but that, that we'll, do, we'll deal with that later. Right now, I kind of want to draw your attention to the turbulent kinetic energy and the specific dissipation rate, omega. And just uh, so you know, omega here is also being uh, defined in a rather funny manner uh, that uh, beta star k omega equals to uh, the epsilon, as, uh, as put here. This is the way that uh, this uh, CFD online does it. So yeah. Um, that's that's the way that uh, this this uh, website has 
chosen to do its notation so uh, just take note of that it is not the omega that we saw in the textbook that says uh, omega equals to epsilon over k so yeah that's just a reminder for you anyway so we we want we want to start okay um, yes this is spoiler alert for next time uh, I might I might do a spoiler almaras model if I have the time but yeah and this is the large eddy simulation bit just ignore that uh, these are my own notes okay from all the YouTube videos uh, yeah anyway so we have this turbulent kinetic energy so I want to draw your attention to that and I want to show you yeah it's pretty much the same in fact I just copy and paste from the previous uh, time so let's see this is the uh, Omega model and this is the K model yeah all right uh, So I'll just copy and paste this here, and then I'll, I'll just rearrange it, I'll just change some terms to make it a little more uh, neat. So I don't have this bracket K here, I'll just put this on top, and likewise I'll put this here. Okay, and this UJ, this big UJ, okay, it, I just make sure the subscripts are the same, and I'll have this uh, uh, eddy viscosity term, I mean no. Uh, uh, kinetic energy diffusion term and this will be divided by sigma k in the k epsilon model but uh, here we'll just use a different sigma k okay and now I will just say k omega sst I'll just put it like that to make it make sure you you kind of um, know the difference so the kinematic viscosity is here. We assume this fluid is incompressible. Of course, for buoyant flows, if you deal with heat transfer natural convection, that's a different story. But it's another level of complication for another time. Okay, so um, we have the production term. Okay, so the production term is pretty much the same. Okay, it is this this thing here. But again, you, you see there's, there's a blend between two things. Okay, so I'll get, get back to that a bit later um, okay so we have that and then we have the destruction term which is epsilon epsilon is uh, beta star omega because beta star uh, omega k if I'm not wrong so look at here beta star omega k bok, bok, bok. yeah <laughs> sounds like a chicken bok, bok. <laughs> anyway, uh, back back to business. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it just reminds me of a game I played last time. Uh, so, anyway, uh, don't get distracted. Okay. Um, so anyway, the K equation is the same. K equation is the same um, as the K omega SST model and the K epsilon model, provided that of course this this thing here is the same, and. Um, all right, I better use omega star to, to differentiate. Okay, um, yeah, it's pretty much the same. And okay, omega star, omega equals to omega star, star, beta star equals to omega star, C mu. All right. So so that that is that beta star should be C mu if I'm not wrong. Yeah, it's this one. Uh, and here it is the same. Beta star is nine over hundred, which is C mu zero point zero nine. Okay. Uh, beta star equals zero point zero nine. Hopefully no confusion there. So this is the K equation. Nothing different here because whether you blend the uh, k omega sst version or the k epsilon version it is pretty much the same uh, yeah so of course this production term kind of differs but we'll talk about it later just just know that this is a production term um, why is there a row here because i 
this 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 production term is in terms of uh, kinematic uh, viscosity i think yeah it's in kinematic terms it's a per unit density term if you look at this production term here this one has a row attached to it so i'm following this notation okay uh, so let me so this is a uh, how to say dynamic dynamic no. it is uh yeah dynamic <laughs> that's the only way i know how to write okay so just take note that this this term is dynamic but this this whole term here it's it just represents the production of k okay the k is this uh per unit uh density ki uh, kinetic energy Okay, so next thing to note is this specific dissipation rate. So, okay, I'll put a note here first. Note, uh, K epsilon, K omega models, K equation remains the same, or same-ish, and so K omega SST is also the same. Alright, so next thing I want to look at is the, uh, let's look at the uh, um, epsilon equation, uh, not epsilon equation, omega equation. Alright, so where's the omega equation? We look at the ones with the extra term, and this is the one I want to use. Okay, so Let's see, from k epsilon, we have this from k omega, we have this. All right, so this one kind of disappears. Okay, so it depends on what, of course, the, the uh, constants you use here. It will differ for both models. Of course, you can replace it as you wish and that's why we have this other function here but again I'll, I'll get get to that uh, later okay so uh, from the k omega I will use a different uh, way of writing these uh, functions uh, these things so I think in here we will have beta omega squared Okay, so let's let's use the beta version. So this is the one. Okay, so I'm not using omega star here. Please remember that. I'm not using omega star here. I'm using the original omega, uh, which is defined as... Uh, uh, omega is defined as uh, epsilon over k. Yeah, omega equivalent. Uh, var epsilon divided by k. Okay, so I'll change this two to uh, the the vanilla omega that we are all more used to. Okay, so that that is that. Um, yeah, so that that gets rid of uh, any confusion, I hope. And then this uh, c e one minus one, it's uh, it's uh, yeah. Where is this alpha? The term is alpha. So that the alpha kind of sits around here doing its own little thing. Don't need, uh, not worrying about tomorrow when all and yeah. That's it. Okay, so this is for direct comparison. The only extra term that pops up is this one. Of course, if the model coefficients, uh, the C epsilon one and the C uh, epsilon 2 are different we can adjust accordingly so this one is uh, compared to with this this one is compared to with this okay all right so let's say we want to blend so yeah we'll get our thing here let's say let's say we want to blend between these two functions all right so what can I do? Okay, so 
in remember uh, the rough the rough idea is the rough idea is away from the wall okay, away from the wall it's a wall away from the wall I want to use a k epsilon model close to the wall I want to use a k k omega model all right so the main difference is this term and we will want to deal with that first so yeah so the main difference is this this term so okay so this is the term uh, the the funny little term that comes out is 2 over uh, k 2 over k uh, new new plus new t over sigma e okay or yeah we don't use that they use this one for sigma omega 2 okay funny choice but okay switch yourself you probably want to use that yeah so anyway we have our phantom term Oh, no, not our phantom term, but this is a special term here. So I will just write uh, partial omega xg, partial kxg. Okay, as follows. Alright. So a question for you. What should this be in the bulk region where you want the k epsilon value, k epsilon model to dominate? This should be um, okay. So in the k epsilon value, uh, k epsilon model, let's call this term a. A should be equals to uh, well, a, right? <laughs> okay, so. The value of a should be equal to a here, and in the in the k omega region near the wall, a equals to zero. Okay, so how can we have a function such that? Yeah, how can we have a function to make this thing, this thing over in the k epsilon region, equals to the, whatever I'm typing here? And then we have over here this value the value of this will become zero how do we do that and the way to do that is to use a blending function okay so the way to do it okay in the k omega SSD formulation or rather in deriving the k omega SSD formulation, yeah, in deriving the k omega SSD formulation, what we can start with is this for the omega equation. We can put a blending function here, f one or one minus f one, or rather, let's just put a function f blending. Okay, f blending. All right. So, what should f blending be over in the k omega region, uh, k in the bulk region? So, f blending, f blending equals to one in the bulk region. In the wall region, f blending equals to zero. And in between, uh, f blending will be between zero and one. No more, no less. Okay. So to have this function uh, in uh, the formulation, we have something like this, 1 minus f1, where f1 uh, ranges from 0 to 1. Okay, so f1 ranges from 0 to 1. So at the wall, at the wall, f1 equals to 0 in bulk region 
uh, I wouldn't say equals, I'll say approaches. Zero in the bulk region, F1 approaches 1. Okay, am I getting that right? So F blending should be 1. Okay, F blending should be 1 in the bulk region and should be 0 in the wall region. So I should invert that. Okay. So now, now you roughly get what I'm trying to say. Um, at the wall, this this term remains. At the, I mean, at the wall, this term disappears. In the bulk region, this term remains. That's what the end game we want to achieve. So, yeah. So we have a one minus f one over here. Okay. So that's that's why we have this term here at least okay we are trying to have this term here now of course the you see this thing is a 1 over omega and this thing is uh, this thing is 1 over k there's a 2 in front here there's a 2 in front here there's the viscosity term oh, okay the viscosity term is kind of missing so that's probably why okay uh, yeah so where, where did this uh, omega come from? So you can see this, this viscosity term. Okay, it's approximately uh, new T divided by sigma epsilon. Okay. Uh, in, what do you call it? Turbulent layer. Turbulent uh, bulk fluid region. Okay, so when just sigma is uh, just another empirical constant, so just by doing that, and we know okay, new t approximately, okay, because we have this special blending function here, but we will, we will just take the simple simple uh, assumption first that this uh, new t is equals to uh, our standard c mu. Uh, k square divided by epsilon. Okay. Uh, also, that that is equals to beta star. Okay, beta star. K square divided by epsilon. Okay. So when we do that, yeah, when we do that, uh, we have uh, new t. Okay, so this term, this term becomes, let's see, this term becomes uh, times 1 over k, alright, uh, it becomes this, or I'd rather put, oopsie, approximately, approx. Because I get uh, I, I neglect this this viscosity term here, so beta star times k square uh, k over omega, or k square over omega, and there's a sigma e at the bottom, sigma epsilon sorry. Okay, and then I'll have one over k, one over k. Oops, it doesn't look too nice. And let's remove the cyan highlight because it's kind of annoying. I mean, it's not. I mean, it's not helpful here, right? I won't say annoying. I said I'll just say it's not helpful. And this will be equal to beta star divided by sigma bar epsilon. Okay. And this k over omega, I mean k over epsilon, k over epsilon. Uh, becomes uh, what do you call this? Uh, omega. Beta star. Sigma. Bar epsilon. One over omega. All right. So, uh, of course, if you combine it together, the very, uh, the very, uh, what what do you call that? Uh, Remember this this uh, form, because the omegas we use are a bit different 
from what uh, it's being used there. Uh, okay, we will use this. We will use this formula. Okay. Don't know why this is coming up. Lagging. Okay, whatever. All right. Uh, the video goes on. Ignore this. Ignore this thing here. My Microsoft Word is acting up. Anyway, so um, omega star omega star equals to uh, omega divided by beta star. All right. So if I invert this, I will just get uh, one divided by sigma epsilon, and then. 1 over omega. So if you take a look here, we'll have a very, very similar looking expression. Okay. Okay, to make it look like. Oh my goodness, why is it doing that? Okay. All right, uh, I restarted Word and okay, I got rid of the, the little column that's like probably due to Microsoft Word lag. Okay, so. This this looks yeah we were over here and this actually looks something like this where we have the omega at the bottom there okay so and we don't really have to care about uh, we don't really have to care about what uh, about this approximation near the wall because this this whole term here actually disappears near the wall okay so what am I talking about uh, let let me get back to you in a bit. We first have this term, okay, uh, we approximately, we, we equal this to, um, okay, 2 times, okay, this term, this whole term here, it becomes this uh, omega over, okay, this sigma over omega, okay, this one here, and then we'll have this. Okay, and we make make the make the disclaimer only applies when nu t oh, nu t divided by sigma epsilon is much much greater than nu i.e. far from wall okay so if you compare this term okay this one was the the one with the blending function so with the blending function okay 2 1 minus f1 and we have all of this here. Okay, this term is supposed to go towards zero at the wall. And otherwise, it's finite far from the wall. Okay, it's a, it's a finite value far from the wall. Because this term should make this whole term zero at the wall. So we don't really have to worry about whatever value this this particular term even if it's an approximation we don't have to worry what this term here what the value of this is at the wall because the whole term kind of drops and becomes zero at the wall anyhow so because we're using the k omega model so yeah um, that's that's basically the introduction to the blending uh, blending thing over here of course we can deal with these two terms uh, later in uh, later videos but uh, yeah, that's the blending blending function, and then f1 should go between zero and one. What does f1 actually look like? It is this this little highlight thing here. Looks very messy, but we'll break it down. We'll try and break it down in future videos as well. So uh, stop talking now because it's getting a long video, getting to become a long video. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again next time. Bye bye.